captain and turn this into a trio now with David Nixon, former BYU and NFL linebacker, joining us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. David, welcome back to the show. I know you've heard about uh, Tim Tebow and your brother-in-law, Taysom Hill, has kind of set the path for Tim Tebow, if you will. So how concerned should Taysom be that a guy like Tim Tebow might take his calling as the Swiss Army knife of the NFL? Listen, uh, not concerned at all. Uh, mainly because Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow last season in the NFL was 2014. I mean, this is a guy who's been out for six, seven years, uh, and, and, and a guy who ran a 4-7 to Bernard Taysom's 4-4. I'm not worried at all. But that being said, Tim Tebow should send a thank you letter to Taysom saying, I uh, appreciate you opening the door for me because uh, he now has his opportunity. Do you think when it's all said and done, David, that he's going to make this roster? Because I know that the big news is now that they're signing him. Do you think he has a legitimate chance of making this team? Speaking of, of Tebow. I, yeah, Tebow, yeah. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, when you've been out of the game for that long, you, your speed hits, you know, there's significant slowdown on your speed. The game itself is now faster than ever because your, your eyes aren't used to it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff he'll have to adjust to. And once again, he's not, he's not Taysom. He doesn't have the speed. He doesn't have the strength of Taysom. And so I, I don't think – you've got Trevor Lawrence. You're not going to take the number one pick in the draft and take him off the field uh, to throw in some Tebow packages. I, I don't know. But, you know, what? I, I, I read something. I think Urban Meyer and Tim Tebow are, are, of course, go back way back to college days, but I think they're also currently neighbors or something <laughs> I read. So who knows? <laughs> who knows? But I think there's some, there's some friendly neighbor uh, going on there where, where he's hooking them up. But – you know, I think it's fun. I think it's fun for everybody to see how he does. But at the end of the day, does he make the squad? I think he's a long shot. Yeah, can you imagine the neighborhood, like, squabble between Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer? Hey, you borrowed my trimmer and you never returned it, you jerk. Hey, those hedges are a little too high. <laughs> I'm going to need those to be trimmed. Uh, after, I'll, get, I'll get to that for practice, Coach. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> David Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's stay on the Taysom Hill storyline and now bring in Zach Wilson. Isn't it interesting that BYU has two of the more prominent storylines based on quarterbacks in the NFL right now? Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston battling for the starting spot in New Orleans. Zach Wilson, the number two overall pick. And what he hopes is uh, – the next great New York Jets quarterback. David, what's the bigger quarterback storyline? What's happening with the Saints in the offseason trying to replace Drew Brees or Zach Wilson in the Jets? Well, I think as far as starting goes, it's pretty obvious that it's Jason and Jameis to figure out, well, like you said, who starts there. But you got a, you got a rookie quarterback, number two overall, and they've given him the reins. They traded Sam Darnold away. They said, this is your team uh, for a rookie, a guy fresh out of college. I mean, it's there's some compelling storylines. And for BYU fans, how exciting is this? When's the last time we had two potentially starting quarterbacks in the NFL? I mean, it goes back decades. It has to. Um, and so for, for BYU fans, it's a fun time to see it all plays out. And, uh, you know, listen, I, I think Taysom, you know, they told him. They told him that you're our guy. And uh, this, is, this has been something they've signaled to him for the, the past few years. And, and, of course, they brought in Jameis to be a backup to Drew last year and to Taysom last year as well. It was pretty obvious Taysom was the number two string whenever – Drew went down the injuries. Uh, Taysom started those four games. And so, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that, that plays out during training camp. That's the best thing about it. You, you need to breed competition. And that's what we see at BYU as well. who has got three quarterbacks, competition. The, the, the cream will rise to the top. And so we'll see what happens out in New Orleans. But for Zach Wilson, I mean, how exciting to, to be drafted and overnight you're handed the keys to an NFL franchise. I mean, it's just, uh, man, it couldn't, couldn't be a better situation. It sounds like so far everything's off and running pretty smoothly. Well, let's stay with that. And obviously, lots of guys drafted. You have five guys drafted. You had seven guys signing for agent contracts. So there are a lot of guys that are in camps. A couple of them got uh, in or got underway over the weekend. A lot are going to start over the next week or to two weeks. What's the most important thing for Zach or any of these guys in these rookie mini camps to learn over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head is to learn. I mean, listen, you're, you're not going to go out there and really compete right now. That's not what this is for. You're out there in helmets, uh, thud pads, but you're not out there trying to attack. You're not trying to impress anybody. You're trying to learn the playbook uh, because you go, you go from this jump from college to pro, it's a whole different ballgame. Uh, the, the language, the playbook, the, the motions, everything's completely different. And keep in mind, most of these guys, had the playbook mastered because they're upperclassmen, right? I mean, Zach Wilson knew that offense 
uh, left and right, no no problems at all. The defensive guys, they know where the, where the adjustments are, are and what gaps are supposed to be in. But also, if you go up to this next level, and the terminology is completely different. The scheme's sometimes very different. You go from running a 3-4 to a 4-3 or whatever it may be on the defense side of the ball. Um, and offensively, you've got different reads, you've got different defenses you're now looking at. It's just a whole new ball game. So for them, it's all about learning. It's taking that playbook, and you kind of have to change your, your mentality of how to learn. I think in college, a lot of us took it for granted, like, I'll oh, show up for some film. I know the plays. I'll, I'll occasionally look at our, our blitzing schemes and, and memorize where I'm supposed to be. But pro, you got this playbook, and you are studying that thing day in and day out right now because it's just all brand-new knowledge to you. Um, and so for them, right now, the, the essential part of being in these OTAs and, or excuse me, these, these mini camps, and eventually we'll see OTAs maybe, uh, is learning the playbook and learning how to learn. Because once again, it's a whole different type of mindset and approach than they have in college. Former NFL and BYU linebacker David Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation, a man who went through the learning curve with several different teams. So you have great perspective on what that takes. That said, David, if we throw in Micah Simon and Aleva Hifo and Kavika Fanua, we're talking approximately 15 guys that are now in the league in some capacity that weren't just a few weeks ago. Of those 15, which guy has the best fit in the NFL with their respective team right now? Man, I mean, that's a uh, – and you're talking about guys that went this year, right? Free agent or were drafted. Yes, Oh, we had a lot of guys drafted at the end. So seventh round, I mean, I'll be honest, typically after the fifth round, those fifth, sixth, seventh rounders, uh, you know, you're not guaranteed a roster spot. I think if you're fourth and up, you're, they're pretty much banking on you being on the roster and contributing some way in the season. So really it is all up in the air for everyone except for Brady Christensen and Zach Wilson. I think everyone else is going to be fighting for a spot. Um, listen, I, I like all the situations they're in. I like Matt Bushman in Las Vegas, frankly. I think this is a guy who – with, without that Achilles tear, I think he is drafted in the first four rounds, especially with the type of season he could have had with Zach Wilson. But we saw what, what Rex did, Isaac Rex did in his in his replacement. So uh, I, I like Matt Bushman. Um, I obviously li- love the fact that, that Brady Christian went where, where he went because I think he's going to blow. I think he should have gone second round, but that's a whole other conversation. Uh, but there's some guys in there. Zane Anderson, listen, I played for Steve Spagnolo, the defensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, and a Zane Anderson, Danny Sorensen type guy fits his mold. That's who he loves to groom uh, are, are these safeties that can run and that are smart. They're going to be in the right position because his defense, Steve Spagnuolo's defense, is very complicated, maybe the most complicated in the whole NFL. Uh, and so you get a smart guy like Zane that can go pick it up and kind of learn from Danny as well. Uh, I, I'm excited. There's a lot of storylines here for guys that have, I think, really legitimate shots. Uh, to try to make a squad. And, and for them, like I said, it's all about learning the system uh, because if you can go out there and show that you know the system just as well as some veteran, you can perform the job maybe just as well, if not just a little worse than him, you're cheaper. The, the younger guy, the rookie's always going to be cheaper than the veteran guy. And at the end of the day, the NFL's a business. So uh, if you can demonstrate that, they'll get rid of the old guy and keep the young guy. That's what makes this time as a BYU fan, and if you're a fan of the NFL, makes it so much fun because there are so many guys with Cougar ties in the league, and not just in the league, but making storylines in the league, winning Super Bowls in the National Football League. So our entire previous segment we were discussing, is this the golden era of BYU players in the NFL. Obviously, you have Steve Young and you had Jim McMahon when they were winning Super Bowls and, you know, and, and they, were, they were it when it came to you know, BYU being recognized as guys in the NFL. Do you think right now is the golden era or do you, do you go back to those times with Young or McMahon or others? Listen, I was in diapers during those times. So I can't really say how it was back then, but I, I think now you look at, to your point, you look at the guys contributing, Sony Taki Taki, you got Fred Warner. You got Jamal Williams. I mean, you've got you got Mike Davis, who's one of the better corners and in, in, in being paid as such. You got Taysom. You now got Zach Wilson. You've got a ton of BYU players who are out there contributing. They're not just bench warmers. These are starters uh, that, that have a huge impact on their respective teams. And so I, I think uh, you probably have to rewind all the way back to maybe the early 2000s. You had the Brett Kiesels and, and Ryan Denny's. There was a good class around there, too. Um, but I think since then, the early 2000s, this is kind of the next wave of kids that are that are getting up and, and making an impact on their teams. And, and once again, this goes back to Kalani. Kalani, 
has finally had his chance to go out there and get his guys, develop his guys. And now, as we saw from this year, he's put him in the NFL. And so uh, now they've got to go out there and perform, make BYU look good. But so far, so good. It's, it's been fun to watch. And I think, listen, I think every Sunday you turn on the television and, and you're watching the game, there's usually a BYU guy in that game somewhere on that team. And so it really is. It's a blast right now to watch them. And that's what it's all about. If you're Kalani, that's what you're telling to these recruits. Come on into BYU. We'll develop you. And you'll go on and get drafted or sign as a free agent uh, and, and hopefully stick on a team. And, and like I said, you point your finger towards Takitaki, Calvin Inouye. I mean, the list goes on of guys who are out there balling out and who are getting paid pretty well. David Nixon on BYU Sports Nation. Earlier you brought up the current quarterback battle at BYU between – what we think is a trio. Sol J. Maiava Peters might have something to say about that and say, hey, I'm, I'm a fourth quarterback. But, David, if you were to start one guy right now on May 11th to play against Arizona, who would the guy be? Jaron Hall, Jacob Conover, or Baylor Romney? I, I, here's the thing. I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. Uh, what I would do is I would take a survey of the team, and I would figure out – who is the quarterback that the guys respect the most? And who's the quarterback that the guys believe in the most? Uh, because in the day, that's what it's all about. His receivers, the running back, the offensive line, when they're blocking for this quarterback, who do, they, who do those players have the most confidence in right now? And, and that's, that's what I'm curious to see because we as spectators, we, especially during COVID, we can't be at practices. We don't get to see them in doing their, you know, their play around practice uh, type situations. Uh, but the players do, and the players know who's in the weight room early, leaving late, who's sticking around watching film. Uh, and so you take a survey, you get a pulse of the players, and I think they'd tell you pretty quickly who that starter should be. Of course, they're not going to announce it on social media or anything, but uh, I'm interested to see who, who that player is that's out there grinding right now and put in the extra time because I think that's what's going to separate these guys. I think, I think they're all on a pretty level playing field. I think there's pros and cons to each player, um, but the question is who do, who do the rest of the players respect? Because that's half the battle, frankly, as a quarterback. you got to be that field general. you got to be that leader. Uh, and if you can rally the troops, uh, then you can get them behind you, and next thing you know, you know good things happen. So I'm excited. I, I think training, you know, fall camp uh, here come August will, will tell us a lot. But I think more than that will be these summer workouts and, and who is a player that kind of rises there and, and who kind of the rest of the team rallies around. Let's just go ahead and get Qualtrics and those anonymous <laughs> polls going yes. within the BYU locker room to try and figure this thing out. Wait, wait, you know, David, the, the other thing that I'm really excited about, and, and we had this conversation on the show a week or two ago, I think the other byproduct of last year, besides everything that Zach did, and he ran this offense flawlessly, but I love the fact that I think BYU's offense now does have an identity. It has a scheme that it knows it has the talent to continue to use. And Aaron Roderick said, we're not going to have to change our offensive scheme regardless of who the quarterback is. I think that's exciting to know what the offense is capable of and know that regardless of who the quarterback is, with the weapons around them, this scheme is sound. 100%. I mean, listen, this is an offensive line that – yeah, you graduate Brady Christian, Tristan Hodge, but you you replenish that line. You've got James Hippie still there, Freeland. I mean, the, the list goes on of guys that are coming back that got significant playing time last year because of some injuries, right? So you've got a strong offensive line. Uh, you got Tyler Algier that I saw some lists. He's one of the top 25 running backs returning this year. You got the Nakua brothers on the outside as well as Gunnar uh, and and so you you've got a, a lot of weapons on the offensive side of the ball. And and to that point, I. All those quarterbacks were in the quarterback room last year, including Conover, because he was redshirting. Uh, so all these guys have been around the system. They know the terminology. Uh, so it should be a plug-and-play type situation with whoever's chosen to be the quarterback. And you've got weapons all around them on the offensive side of the ball. And I think that's what's so exciting. This, this really isn't that rebuild we talked about. It's more of a reload. And it comes down to the quarterback position. That's really the only position you're just having to go out there and, and replace. And it's, it's big shoes to fill. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but fortunately, you've got the weapons still around them that were there last year and that uh, helped Zach kind of make the run that he did. David, let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for, I don't know, your next round of golf or whatever you want to use it for, just because it's been a while since we've done that. It's the least we can do for you joining us today. I, I need it. I need it for my next round of golf. I much appreciate it. I'll take that karma and try to apply it to the golf course. My putting is atrocious. <laughs> All right. It's good to know. Don't tell anybody else, so, especially if they're uh, trying to take your candy or something. <laughs> Thanks, David. Let's proceed. David Nixon on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. That was good.